Hello, I'm Dr. John Pooterley. Many years ago, I committed myself to help people by becoming a doctor. During the last 20 years of my practice, I started studying and researching type 2 diabetes. Today, I'm here to challenge your understanding of the cause of type 2 diabetes. I invite you to watch this video. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, in the United States about 1.5 million Americans are newly diagnosed with diabetes each year. The Institute for Alternative Futures has projected that by 2030, almost 55 million Americans will have diabetes, the vast majority being type 2, with the total annual medical and societal cost related to diabetes reaching $622 billion. Many countries throughout the world are also seeing a rapid rise in diabetes. It is estimated that worldwide, 1 in 11 people have diabetes. Experts tell us that people developing insulin resistance caused by obesity is responsible for type 2 diabetes. Insulin resistance is when your cells do not recognize the presence of insulin outside of the cell wall, and so they do not let glucose in your bloodstream inside the cell. The problem is, there are numerous inconsistencies and biologically unsound conclusions about the insulin resistance theory. For example, diabetes experts say that insulin resistance occurs with only three types of organs, muscles, fat tissue, and the liver. How could this be? Why only three types of cells, but not other cells such as in skin, bone, brain, kidney, and so on? In addition, no one knows what prompted these cells to develop resistance, or whether the internal mechanism that creates it is the same in each of these cell types. Also, why do these three types of cells become resistant only to insulin and not to three other hormones also involved in regulating blood glucose level, minute by minute? Here's another inconsistency. How does a pregnant woman with no prior or family history of diabetes develop gestational diabetes? For this to happen, millions of cells in the mother have to change their insulin sensitivity on a daily basis in as little as eight weeks. Can independent cells in the human body execute a biological change of this magnitude? And what's stranger is that most women with gestational diabetes see their blood sugar returning to normal within days after giving birth. What is the mechanism for this amazing flip-flop? Here's another inconsistency in the insulin resistance theory. As we said, diabetes is usually associated with obesity. But lean people can also become type 2 diabetic. When that happens, medical experts claim that the pancreas is not releasing enough insulin to keep blood sugar level down. But why? What is the mechanism that prevents the pancreas to release insulin? And why don't all thin people develop diabetes? Overall, I suggest it is time to question the insulin resistance theory and see if there isn't a more logical and biologically better explanation for the cause of type 2 diabetes. This is important because it can affect how we prevent diabetes or reverse it for someone who has it. Let us first look at how insulin works so we can understand that better. Every cell in the body can use glucose to extract chemical energy called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. This chemical is similar to electricity in that it fuels the metabolic actions inside the cell. In this way, glucose in your bloodstream feeds your cells. However, when glucose is outside, the cell has no knowledge that it is there. Cells do not have any type of receptor sort of a doorbell to tell the cell that the glucose is waiting to come in. This is where insulin comes into play. When glucose is absorbed into the blood after a meal, it can go into the pancreas that releases insulin in response. So now what happens is that the insulin accompanies glucose molecules, and when they get to cells, the insulin hormone alerts the cell to the presence of the glucose. In effect, the insulin rings a bell on the cell to say, glucose delivery. Now the cell reacts and sends out little trucks called glucose transporters to fetch the glucose. In people who develop diabetes, the insulin resistance theory claims that the cell does not recognize the presence of insulin to ring the bell. The cells are thought to be resistant or insensitive to the insulin. This is why the glucose does not get in and remains in your bloodstream and thus you have high blood sugar. But as I said, this insulin resistance theory is inconsistent and biologically illogical. I have a different theory that makes much more sense. First of all, in most people, when they're diagnosed as having type 2 diabetes, their blood shows both insulin and glucose at normal or higher than normal levels. 
So this negates the theory that the pancreas is not producing enough insulin. Secondly, rather than believing in insulin resistance, here is what I think is happening that causes blood sugar to rise and eventually cause diabetes. In your body, the most important users of glucose to extract energy are your muscle cells. The average adult is made of 36 to 42% of skeletal muscle as percentage of body mass. Muscle cells are like a hybrid car. They can produce ATP from two things. Like a hybrid car, muscle cells can use either glucose to produce ATP, or they can use fatty acids to produce ATP. When you have not eaten all day to replenish the glucose in your blood, or you have been highly active and burned a lot of glucose, your muscles function by producing ATP from fatty acids. This is a normal occurrence. I call this the fatty acid burn switch, and it's normal. But what will happen to glucose if muscles are continuously using fatty acids to extract energy? The glucose does not get used and remains in your bloodstream. So now the question is, where do fatty acids come from? Ordinarily, fatty acids enter the body from food during digestion or when the liver produces them from excess glucose or some amino acids. Ordinarily, if your muscle cells are not burning fatty acids that are in your bloodstream, they are stored in the form of triglyceride molecules inside your fat cells. By the way, this is how you gain weight, by filling your fat cells with fatty acids that do not get burned in your normal daily functions. The problem is, at some time, you fill up your fat cells. Everyone has only a certain allotment of fat cells. We inherit our fat cell capacity from our ancestors. We do not inherit a diabetes gene. When you fill up your fat cells, mostly by overeating carbohydrates like grains, your body can no longer store the excess fatty acids. They remain in your bloodstream, accessible to your muscle cells. And so your muscle cells begin burning plentiful fatty acids rather than glucose on a regular basis. Fatty acids can get into the muscle cell walls very fast, so the cell does not even need any glucose when insulin arrives to ring the bell. This fatty acid burning continues because fatty acids that cannot get into your fat cells remain in your bloodstream to feed your muscle cells. When your muscle cells, the largest user of glucose, don't need all that glucose, it remains in your bloodstream. There are three stages your body goes through. At first, your fasting blood sugar starts going up. Later, your after-meal sugar levels stay higher for longer, and finally, at last, your blood sugar levels are elevated all the time. Eventually, that is what leads to type 2 diabetes. The fact that your muscle cells are using fatty acids creates the illusion that insulin resistance is the cause of leaving glucose in your blood. But it is the fatty acid burn switch that is actually occurring. The fatty acid burn switch better explains why obese people and thin people both can get diabetes. It better explains why pregnant women develop gestational diabetes and then lose after the baby is born. It better explains why younger and younger children are developing diabetes. There is no reason why young children should become insulin resistant. Note that not all obese people will develop diabetes. It depends on their fat storage capacity. Someone considered obese using BMI may still have normal blood sugar if their fat storage capacity is not full. So what is the solution? In a word, cut down your consumption of grains. As much as possible, cut out from most of your meals foods like breads, corn and flour tortillas, flatbreads, rice, pizza, snack foods like chips, cakes, and cupcakes, muffins, and donuts. This is because in the present day diet, we consume a huge amount of glucose when we eat grains and grain flour products. Carbohydrates from grains contain thousands of molecules of glucose. This is why you need to minimize or avoid your consumption of these foods that contain large volumes of glucose, which if not used up quickly by the body, get stored in the form of fatty acids in your fat cells. And as you learned, that is what triggers the fatty acid burn switch. Focus your diet on eating vegetables, meat, fish, eggs, dairy, fruit, and nuts. This is how you can prevent diabetes. Changing your diet is also how you can reverse diabetes if you already have it. If you alter your diet and cut out grains and grain flour to almost zero, you can actually reverse your high blood sugar within eight weeks. For more information on how you can do this, visit my website and read one of my books, Eat, Chew, Live for People Who Want to Prevent Diabetes, and Diabetes, The Real Cause and the Right Cure for People Who Want to Reverse Diabetes.
now that you know the real cause of type 2 diabetes, I urge you to get the book and start following these steps so that you can control your blood sugar and reverse type 2 diabetes without having to use medications. Thank you for watching and get the book.